The strength of the Dranthi Empire lay in their ability to transcend light speed, and in their near endless lives tied directly to a certain class of star. Early probes sent to Somnum 13249b had been promising, showing several gas giants and habitable planets all within good range of a Somnum class star. There have been traces of lesser life forms, carbon based organic life, incapable of technology or any known quantum or telepathic connectivity. The Duranthi probes did what the probes were designed to do. They gathered data on the makeup of the different planets and moons in orbit, and before turning back to the Empire, they shunted an asteroid into collision course with the life infested planet. The Galactic Federation had never been a fan of how the Duranthi expanded their borders, but with the loophole of not trampling on any civilization unless provoked, the Empire could grow as long as there were stars. Uncountable eons later, the probes slipped back into real space within the Duranthi Imperial borders, and with that came the next step. An expeditionary fleet to make sure that nothing unexpected had happened to the star, that no new civilization had risen or colonized the planets, and, in case that had happened, provoke an attack. This time, the propagation protocols had to be enacted. The tiny, insignificant rock that had been wiped clean by the drones has built a new life, and this life was intelligent. It didn't take long for the expeditionary fleet to scare the locals into an attack, baited out with an empty ship left to menace the planet in low orbit until it was boarded by the lifeforms, triggering a set of primitive atomics that should have been a good match for the technology of the civilization. There was now clear proof of a first strike from the Upstar lifeforms. Spectrometer readings, light feeds, video recording, everything. The Somnum 13249b civilization, nicknamed 49 Beta by the Expeditionary Force, had clearly boarded one of the Expeditionary ships and probably blown it up. It was only through sheer luck that the ship had been evacuated in time. After a brief skirmish in orbit against some improvised spacecraft, just to drive up the conflict more, and a few eradicated habitation zones, the Exploration Fleet retreated, slipping away from real space and into the gravitic slipways created by projecting a field not dissimilar from the event horizon of a black hole around the ship and shunting yourself slightly out of alignment with the fabric of space-time. The technology of the gravitic drive, although old now, had been a significant leap forward over the primitive post-light engines of the scouting probes, reducing the traversal time between Somnum 13249b and Somnum Prime from eons down to only a few hundred years. The expeditionary force were pulled out of their sleeping pods to cheers and thunderous applause, a new Somnum star had been found to include in the Imperium. Billions more years were added to each, and every citizen's already near eternal lifespan in that moment. A new star. The Imperial Court issued the decree of war, releasing the terrible footage of the atomic destruction of the expeditionary ship, the brave but harrowing fights the rest of the small force had been through, and finally, their valiant escape to carry these news with them back home. The hands of the Galactic Federation were tied, as the Drown Thie mustered their forces. Grand General mal was given the honour of leading the Retaliation Fleet. He was crowned with the burning laurels of Somnum Prime, as 5,000 Starborn raised burning swords to the heavens, ready to bring the might of the vast and endless Duranthi Empire down upon the savages of Somnum 13249b. 5,000 Starborn and 10,000 more crew members all went to sleep within the battleships. The journey was calculated to take 300 years, a blink in the wide span of their lives, but the mind wanders when travelling outside of space-time. Mad Ellen was the last to go to sleep, A space unfolded around his grand capital ship, and a retaliation fleet entered the Iris of Oblivion. When Mad Ellen woke, it was to the sound of a distressed computer. Not an alarm, but something was... off. He pulled himself out of the dry and temperate sleeping pod, ruffling his immaculate uniform as he did so. Computer, error report. Anomalous development discovered in the Somnum system. Anomalous how? Somnum class star no longer active. Civilization on third planets no longer active. System wide resources desolated. What? Somnum class star no longer active. Civilization on third planets. The computer went on to repeat the report again. Readouts hovered in the air around him as the rest of the bridge crew were waking and. The readings made no sense. Something had devoured everything in the system. Something had killed. the star. General. The science officer asked. What's going on? I don't know. Clear your head. I want answers. The science officer took a look at the readings, double checked them and ran separate calculations along the floating lights of their workstation. General? Yes, officer. It's not just that everything is gone. The star, Somnum 13249b, 
It has collapsed. Collapsed? Yes, sir. See for yourself. The science officer flicked a node of light towards the viewport of the bridge, and it grew as it went, expanding into a black hole set at the centre of the star system. The retaliation fleet slowed to a crawl, not wanting to run a planet only to find whatever it was that had escaped the system bare and murdered the star, but they found nothing. It took them months to go from one planet to another, and all they found was nothing. Nothing other than ruined remnants of orbital stations that could have been used for mining and habitation domes on inhospitable planets. The gas giants were reduced to rock and clouds, and the foreplay was entirely gone. A small band of rubble floating in his orbit, significantly less mass than what should have been left from a broken planet. The third planet seemed the most intact, set in a strangely stable orbit around the black hole at the centre of the system, and with scans indicating that the second and first had either been entirely swallowed by the black hole itself, or broken down like the fourth one. But even the third one, the seat of the 49 Beta civilization, was dead. Massive structures decayed in orbit, falling apart from being hammered with micrometeorites and orbital debris for what must have been hundreds of years. There were no monuments left standing. No cities, or castles, or temples at all. Just a barren world, devoid of water, of atmosphere, and of life. And then, there was the black hole itself. As they neared it, the science officer and their team seemed to get a return ping from... something. Set in orbit, locked against the immense tidal forces of the black hole was a ring, only a few dozen kilometres across. It pinged out a signal, as if to say, Look at us, we were here. The ring turned out to be some sort of station, Looking closer at it, it seemed as if the inside of the ring extended forever into the heart of the black hole, through the event horizon, past the point where anything would be ripped to pieces. You couldn't see the tunnel from the outside. What is that? Manellan asked his science officer. I have no idea. It reads similar to one of our gravitic drives, but it's so much more, and it's built like a gate? It took the retaliation fleet another three years to successfully investigate the strange ring station. It too was abandoned, empty, but here the systems were dormant, and although the science team could make no progress with the computers, they did find something else. A large golden tablet, larger than even the doorways that Civilization 49 Beta used, and on it were two figures etched, the two sexes of the species the science team concluded. But there was also a message. Thanks to sequencing of some languages during the expeditionary encounter with the Civilization, the computer could translate the message on the golden tablet with some coaxing and cursing from the science team. We call ourselves human, and this was our home. 600 years ago, we found out that we were not alone in the universe. 600 years ago, we found out that the universe wanted us dead. After catastrophic loss of life and land, after catastrophic attacks, we decided to attack. We have seen the thousands of systems belonging to the other, belonging to the ones who tried to kill us, we have found our weapons and revenge in the remnants of the first attack, an engine that bends space-time with the help of a black hole. It was inefficient. We call ourselves human, and this was our home. We called our home Earth. Seeking vengeance for our dead planet, we killed our sun. We have found a way to traverse the stars, and now we will burn the heavens. A chill ran across the skin of Manellan. They killed... Their star? Sir. The science officer stood next to him as he looked up from the translated message. Yes? We found some old code in our archives that we didn't have to decrypt. It seems to have been data from our expeditionary ship that went down in the first strike. And? Manella wasn't sure he wanted to hear the answer. It seems the humans took a great interest in our life cycle, in the way we live off our stars. Just then, a ping came to them from the outer system. A gravitated drive probe was slipped into real space and screamed out a message. A message from Somnum Prime, from a little under 300 years ago, about a year after the retaliation fleet had left for Somnum 13249B. Sir? On screen. The message showed a vid feed of Somnum Prime collapsing in on itself in a light so bright it even heard to look at the display. And once the light had faded, the burning crown of a black hole could be seen. The video kept running for another half hour before readings came up on the screen, finally bounced back into the monitoring station from what was once Somnum Prime. Something had emerged from the black hole. A swarm of thousands upon thousands of ships, all repeating the same simple message that now could be automatically translated as the patterns appeared on screen.
for us.